You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com. Hello, everyone. This is Jennifer Lake, host of Fierce, Fit, and Fun, Brilliant Mind, Body, Spirit Practices to Elevate Your Life from the Inside Out. I'm so excited to be speaking with my expert today, Dr. Steve G. Jones, who is a board-certified clinical hypnotherapist who has been practicing hypnotherapy since the 1980s. He's the author of 25 books on such topics as hypnosis, the law of attraction and weight loss. He also created over 9,000 hypnosis audio recordings and 22 different online certification programs, which are sold in over 140 countries. Dr. Steve has been featured on Bravo's Millionaire Matchmaker as both a hypnotherapist and a millionaire. Additionally, Dr. Steve has been interviewed on CNN, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, Jennifer, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so, I'd like to just dive right in if it's okay. Sure. Um, can you just explain what uh, hypnosis and hypnotherapy are, and specifically if there's a difference between um, between such a regular hypnosis and the clinical hypnotherapy that you practice? Sure. Well, the way I define it, and realize that there are some, you know, there are different schools of thought, but the way I define it, to keep it simple, is hypnosis is relaxing someone into a hypnotic state. Hypnotherapy is giving them positive suggestions while they are in that hypnotic state. Got it. Great differentiating points there. So there's there's a difference between helping someone actually relax and then actually reprogramming someone while they're under that relaxed state. Yes. Um, and can you talk a little bit more about why it's so powerful, why like it's such a helpful transformative tool and what it's really kind of moving beyond in order to be so helpful for so many people? Sure. Well, it just cuts to the chase because you can. Now, I'm not opposed to long-term therapy. I think that if someone wants to talk for a, you know, a few months or even a few years to a therapist, if that what they want to do in order to get better, then that's fine, and, and it works just fine. There are all kinds of advanced techniques that therapists un understand and can utilize. But if you're, I don't know, maybe not quite that patient. If you just want to get things done, you want to get to the heart of the matter. Hypnotherapy is very powerful because it gets right to the subconscious mind, and that's where all the power is. That's where you make changes. Yeah. So you save yourself a lot of time, a lot of money, uh, a lot of uh, you know wasted time. Because if you're not where you want to be yet, then every moment that you're not there is 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 wasted time when you could have already been there. So the way I look at it, I'm not a very patient person. Really, I like to get get from here to there as quickly as possible, and not really take the scenic route. So hypnotherapy suits people like me who who really just want to get the job done. So actually, it helps to go past the conscious mind and help to reprogram the subconscious mind, which is actually really like the hub of our being is my understanding is that really any any sort of permanent long-term change needs to happen at that level in order for it to be sustainable. That very well put. I'm going to use that from now on. If you could just send me a transcript of this interview, that's, that's very, very succinctly put. I like that. Yes. Um, so I, I'm curious from a personal perspective. Um, I've heard this quote many times, and I don't know where the research was done or how it was conducted, but um, this idea that we have 60,000 thoughts per day, and I don't know, again, where that data came from, but I've seen it around for the past 10 years, I would say, through different um, sites and uh, accredited institutions, that we have 60,000 thoughts per day and that we have... Um, out of those thoughts, the majority of them are negative. And for every one negative thought, we need to have three positive thoughts to at least neutralize the negative. Can you speak to that at all as far as, you know, if you have heard that quote and if you have, you know, what your thoughts are about it? I, I have not heard that quote. I, I have not heard of that research. I'd be interested to find out uh, some of the sources. Uh, but I, I'd say in general, now that let's just uh, say that that is accurate. Uh, let's just go. Let's just yeah. accept that as a, a truth that that study has been done and it and it showed that. Um, I would what I would say to that is 
that it is within our control to generate those positive thoughts. And the more we do that, the easier it becomes because the fewer negative thoughts we will have. And at first it feels like we're lying to ourselves. You know, you, you think to yourself, oh, I can't do this. It'll never work out. And then you say it to yourself, and it sounds like a complete lie when you say it to yourself, I can do it. I will right. do it. Even if you don't know how you do it, even if you don't really, really, really believe that it will happen. But you, you keep pro programming yourself that way. So when you do replace those pos- those negative thoughts with positive thoughts and you do it uh, regularly enough, it's just like any other exercise. It gets easier and the the what comes back to you just compounds. It just gets better and better. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of people um, don't necessarily believe that they have the choice in what they think, or maybe they haven't experienced yet that they can actually put different thoughts and, and focus on the ones that are where they want to grow and blossom instead of the chatter that can be existing for, for people in the background. So it's good to highlight and point out that we have that choice in what we're thinking and we can really reprogram um, to have a more positive default uh, setting. Um, yes. Do you, would you mind sharing what maybe one of your limiting thoughts was or maybe you currently have prior to being at this um, stage in your life and your business and what you do for people? Well, I, I have had limiting thoughts in the past about money and my mm-hmm. ability to to generate it. And it's interesting how things started to change for me because about uh, uh, maybe at this point, about 12 years ago, I was asked to give a talk about marketing and I was asked to share how I was doing and what I was doing. And there was a plateau I was attempting to reach at that time, a certain amount of money per month, but I wasn't there yet. But at the talk, I just, I just, told myself that I would just throw it out there that I am making that amount of money per month. And, but I wasn't, but I knew that was the secret to getting over it, to announce it on a, it was, I think 300 people in the audience at a hypnosis conference. And I just announced that within six months of that, I was making double that per month. So I had gone from not even making that to making double that per month. So there's a lot of power in, throwing things out there in in putting it out there. I think I've gotten a little off off base from your question. What was your initial question? Well, it was about, no, you're good. I, I'm fascinated by that. Um, it was what was one limiting thought that you had. And okay. You just, you just said it. So the limitation around, around. Uh, a belief around how much money you can make a month and the solution was to announce it to 300 people. Yeah. And then you were able to get it in six months, which is amazing. Well, thank and you. I was wondering... Like, what type of conviction, like, when you're saying something like that in front of a group of people, what type of, what level of conviction did you have when you, when you stated it? I thought, you know, there are fact checkers. I better make this true. There are people who will go and check facts, and they're going to look into this, and they're going to make sure. And uh, I, I, you know, darn well better make it happen. And so I did that on purpose. That's why when people want to quit smoking, I say, hey, tell all your friends. People want to keep it a secret. Oh, I'm I'm secretly attempting to quit smoking, but don't tell anyone in case I fail. And the reason that they don't often say that last part in case I fail, but that's what they mean. In case I fail, I don't want the embarrassment of my my friends seeing that I tried and failed. Well, there is no try, first of all. You're either going to do it or not. And if you're really going to do it, why not make a big announcement about it? Um, do you mind sharing a little bit about how hypnosis could help people in their process of transformation and specifically in their process of becoming more healthy? Oh, it's, it helps at every step of the way. And that's not just me selling hypnosis. It just It's helped me every step of the way. And whether people use hypnosis formally in a hypnosis recording or go to a hypnotherapist or not, they're still under hypnosis. They either hypnotize themselves to believe that they can make that change or that they, or that they cannot make that change. So when we look at something like getting in shape, you know, recently I lost 
uh, close to 20 pounds because I had a little extra, you know, middle-aged belly weight that I wanted to get rid of. And so I used hypnosis. I also combined that with a, an outstanding diet that I can do for the rest of my life, by the way, not one of these forced, horrible diets where uh -huh. you're just eating yeah. cardboard and protein. Yeah, so it was something that I could... Yeah. Uh, not at all. Yep. Yeah, it's just, I mean, those are fad diets. Hey, if you got a reunion coming up yep. and you just want to lose weight for that, fine. But if you really care about yourself and your health and, and living longer and being an inspiration to others, then you need to do something you can do long term, as you know. So I... Right. I used hypnosis for that, and it and it was so easy, and it's still easy. I'm still doing those things differently. And exercise motivation, you know, I recently uh, hired a personal trainer because I've been exercising for years. But it it one day occurred to me that I'm not an exercise expert. I don't. I haven't been trained in all these exercises. I've just seen videos on it, and I've talked to doctor friends and gotten, I kind of put together a bunch of information, but I hired someone to show me a standard system that I could use. And so that helps. And I used hypnosis for that because I knew I was going to resist it and I wanted to be able to be on board with it. And thanks to hypnosis, I oh, was on board oh. with it. So okay, I'm just going to stop right there because you made a good point. So you use hypnosis to help you come over your points of resistance. Because yes. a lot of times those points of resistance for people like fear or I haven't done it or maybe I've tried it and it hasn't worked before, so why would I try it again? Those are all resistance points that it's normal for everyone to experience those no matter what they're working on in their life career-wise or change-wise or personal growth-wise. So you're saying um, you utilize hypnosis to help you move past those points of resistance so that you could have the outcome and result that you were looking for. So that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. And there's there's always going to be a point of resistance, no matter what level you get to in life, no matter who you are, what you've done. There's always, hopefully, the next plateau that you're aiming for, that you want to climb, you want to reach the summit. And so you never end up at the end. You're always climbing, always reaching, always growing and expanding. So there are always going to be these points of resistance. I know I came this far, but I don't know about the next part. I don't know. That's very few people have done that. I just don't know. So that's resistance. And it's it's a constant thing. So you need to get a good system, whatever it is, hypnosis or mantras or whatever works for the individual. You've got to have a system for breaking through those barriers. You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com. So I'm a, I'm a yogi and a yoga teacher, and I've been meditating for years. I have a consistent practice. And one of my points of curiosity is, I, you know, I believe they, they do hypnosis and meditation, do similar things as far as, you know, what space they place our brain and as far as the brain waves. And I'm just wondering if you can speak to that, what the differences are between hypnosis and meditation, and if there are differences, what they are. Well, very few differences. I mean, when we put someone into hypnosis, we want them to go at least into alpha. That's a little bit slowed down. That's a state you go in when you ride a bike, read a book, watch TV. Uh, sometimes people do that when they're driving, when they just wake up, when they're just going to sleep. They're not really awake, not really out of it. Anytime you do something by rote, anything you know how to do really well, like you know, taking a shower or, or driving uh, to work and back or anything that you just, you can kind of space out and go on autopilot. Those are examples of hypnosis when your brain goes into alpha. Below that, we have theta and delta, which are deeper states of hypnosis, but they're also deeper states of sleep. So the sleep scale is no right. different from the hypnosis scale. Likewise, the meditation is no different from either of those scales either. The only difference that I've right. been able to determine potentially between hypnosis and meditation is at least hypnotherapy and meditation. In hypnotherapy, we're outcome oriented. They want someone wants to stop smoking, lose weight, okay. uh, get in shape, something like that. In meditation, sometimes the the goal is just to find that peace, that inner peace, and just relax and think about the events of the day. So sometimes the outcomes are different, but the the state that you get into is the same. Very similar. Okay. That's, yep. Thank you for clarifying that. Sure. Um. Let's see. Would you mind sharing a little bit about what your own personal healthy living regime looks like? I know you mentioned you you kind of made a big shift with what you're eating and you hired a personal trainer, but are there any are there any things outside of that that you like to do that help you stay healthy and vibrant and 
hopefully you have fun as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yesterday I, I took a road trip with a friend, 11 hour road trip, and it was, it was awesome. Just stuff like that, because on my exercise schedule, it said rest that day. And I'm not very good at resting, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't like that word. I'm so. glad you had a rest day in there, though. So you took an 11 11- what was it again? It was a road trip? 11-hour road trip, yes. we. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. it, it was a lot of fun. It was a friend I hadn't seen in, in 20 years. Uh, he's a, an author. Um, we went, uh, we just drove to his uh, brother's house and had uh, Easter dinner, and it was, it was wonderful. Aww. And uh, yeah, it was great. And it was something that it in no way really benefited me other than it allowed me to clear my mind to do something completely different. Yeah. So you have to be yeah. open to that kind of thing, to spontaneous fun. He said, you want to take a road trip? I said, yes. And then we did it. And it was great. So that kind of thing keeps me vibrant. But that's in addition to my my exercise routine, which is, you know, rest, cardio, workout, rest, cardio, workout. Then the workouts are all varied. And my also – regimented yet uh i like it uh food routine i eat certain certain types of food at certain points of the day but i but these are foods that i really like and the calories are all, all accounted for so it's something that fits into my lifestyle very easily but the important thing is to to yeah keep things fun keep things interesting always look for opportunities to to get out and uh have an adventure or do whatever it is that that's fun for you Awesome, awesome. I love that your rest day consisted of an 11-hour drive. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's good. That's a great Yeah, rest. that's how I rest, so it right? It like it was fun. <laughs> um, would you mind filling in the remainder of this statement? If at first you don't succeed... I'd say do it. I'd say do it. I, I, don't like, anyway. I don't like the word try. I would just say do it, which I think I'm taking from uh, Nike. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if at first you don't succeed, do it. And that just cuts through everything. It's not a matter of try, try again, because try, try again sounds like, you know, try and fail, try and fail. But if you don't succeed, you have got to find a way to do it. And so it's it's not a matter of are you going to try, are you going to maybe do it. Just cut through all the stuff and whatever way works for you, get it done using that method. Yeah, get it done. Don't give up. Right. Keep going. Yep. Um how important is goal setting to you? Uh, goal setting to me is everything. I have a schedule. You know, I'm extremely organized. And and by the way, freedom comes from organization. When you when you have your life so well organized that you have a full day with nothing to do except rest. You know, that's that's freedom. Uh, people look at my schedule and they think, "Wow, how do you do all that stuff in a day?" And I say, "Well, I've just got it organized. I'm probably doing as much as anyone else. I've just got it organized very nicely so that I can find times where I can just goof off and rest and not do anything so yeah. these are these are part of the the ways that I um that I get things done do you recommend hypnosis or hypnotherapy every day well I don't think that it needs to be done every day for example if someone needs to work on something let's say they've been asked to give a uh, speech and they're potentially going to be very nervous because it's a big speech in front of a lot of people and they're they've got some uh you know butterflies just thinking about it and so what i would recommend is if you have three weeks before that ideally you'd want to listen to a hypnosis recording on confidence for example or charisma uh for three weeks in a row every night or at least most of those nights uh but if you don't have that many nights before it then you know you do what you can uh, at least my hypnosis recordings are designed to be listened to at night. So I, I really don't yeah. think that someone needs to listen to hypnosis every night because I never want people to be dependent upon it. I don't want them to think that that's where their power comes from because it's not. The power comes from them, right. from the individual. They need to learn how to do those things on their own, how to generate that motivation and confidence all by themselves. So it's meant to be something that – can be just a really valuable resource for them to have to be empowered in whatever it is they're looking to overcome and work through so that they can have that foundation for their their, their momentum moving forward. Again. But it is something that people can go back to. Yeah. Again, um, an outstanding answer, and, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> um, they can go back to you and uh, utilize again if something else comes up because we're, we're all human beings and I think, you know, 
is things will continue to come up as we continue to live our lives and expand and grow in new directions. Yes. Um, what do you think are like some of the biggest myths or what do you come up against as a hypnotherapist with people, you know, saying why they shouldn't do that or um, what some kind of um, misunderstandings that people have about it? Well, you hear things like uh, they people think they might go into a coma, which is not true. Uh, they think they might yeah. be under the power of the hypnotist to, to do to do their bidding. Um, you know, anything the hypnotist tells them to do, they'll do. That's not true. Uh, people will not violate their own morals under hypnosis. And uh, I think those those are the two main concerns that they'll be made into a zombie or maybe go into a coma. And those things simply don't happen not what you're in your profession for right people into zombies right yes we it's, yeah the the yelp <laughs> reviews clarify. would be horrible yeah yeah <laughs> um switching gears a little bit if you're willing to i have a, a bonus round of questions that are, is actually from the actor studio with bruce lipton are you game oh yeah that sounds fun okay so what's your favorite word <laughs> my favorite word is yes because that get that gets things done what is your least favorite word? No, because that stops everything. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Helping people. That that drives everything. Whatever I can do to help people, that, that leads me to create new programs and do interviews like this and, uh, and think outside of the box. What's your favorite curse word? <laughs> favorite curse word. Yep. Wow, what a question. Mm -hmm. Favorite curse word. Um, Bruce Lipton made these up, not me. <laughs> you know, I, I lived in Georgia for nine years, so I like to say, you know, when I, when I get upset and I'm texting someone, I always text, dang it, D-A-N-G-I-T. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> okay. Yeah, just... <laughs> I, I personally, I'm from New England, so to me that doesn't really qualify as a curse word. Right, not even a word but, at all. Um, What's yours? I What's... get it. It passes. Can, are you allowed well, to say yours? I I oh, okay. I, I can't. Yeah, sure. That's I probably a. Mom, so I, yeah. I rein it in a lot. There you go. Um, <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? Wow. Let's see. Um, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo. I'd say the sound of light rain and a little bit of thunder in the distance mixed in. What sound or noise do you not like? The sound of lightning. I grew up in South Florida, so a little bit of rain and thunder, that's gentle and soothing. Lightning, you know, a lightning bolt is hotter than the surface of the sun, so I do not like <laughs> lightning bolts anywhere near me. Yes. yes. Um, what profession, other than the one that you currently have, would you like to do? Would you like to attempt? Uh, medical doctor. I mean, that's really what I would be if I, if I wasn't a hypnotherapist. I, I definitely, and I've, I've considered it a few times now that I'm approaching 50, I'm thinking, well, you know, it might be more challenging to learn a new, teach an old dog, new tricks, but definitely medical like doctor. Medical doctor. Yes. What, say it again. Um, what perfect what, oh, sorry, I was just saying, yes, why, why not? When you're 50, why not become a medical yeah, doctor? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of stranger things. Yeah, exactly. Um, what profession would you like not to do? Ooh, a janitor, because I've done that. I had a summer job when I was in uh, high school, and I was a janitor at a mall going around sweeping up uh, cigarette butts. And uh, I, yeah. I just didn't, uh, you know, I, I, I say thank goodness for for janitors and, and people who want to do that and who are good at that. And that's, you know, and there's, and it was very meditative, actually. I was able to space out a lot because, again, I was doing something by rote. So I was able to kind of go into hypnosis. But it just, I, I know from firsthand experience, it was not my thing. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gate? <laughs> Oh, let's see. Maybe if he could have a, a Guinness beer ready, just you know, a perfect one with a nice amount of foam on top. So I've been to I've been to Dublin, Ireland, the Guinness uh, factory, and I I, I rare, rarely drink, but when I do, I like Guinness beer. So I'd, I I'd like him to say, "Here's your Guinness," and and hand it to me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He's like, on your, your, here's your nice beer. Um, well, I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to answer all of my questions today. It's been wonderful getting to speak with you. you Where too. can people find out more about you and your um, 
and your gifts that you have for everyone? Well, they can just go to my website, which is stevegjones.com. Got a free hypnosis recording for you there. It's just stevegjones.com. Awesome. All right. So I hope everyone that you will check that out. And this has been Jennifer Lake of Fierce, Fit, and Fun. Have a wonderful day. You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com.